Hello friends, this is Ryan from Behind Eyes Gaming, and welcome to another Path of Exile video. In today's video I'm going to go over a new build that I haven't completed but I'm pretty excited to talk about, and that is my uh, Pillar of the Caged God Juggernaut. And I think there's a lot of ways to do this, and I don't think a Juggernaut's necessarily the best one to go with, but I do think it does provide a lot of advantages in the long run. Uh, once I get the character fully built, that uh, aren't necessarily given with like a Berserker or something. Although Berserker would also be very, very strong with this. Uh, you could also do this with a Slayer. You could probably do this with like a Raider. Uh, there's quite a few different builds you could almost certainly do this with. Um, but I think Juggernaut's a pretty cool way to do it. And I'm going to talk about it, but before I do that... Uh, I'm just going to demo a low-level map. I'm only level 78, so I'm just going to do a tier 5 map. I've been doing a lot of shrines, which is a little bit of an awkward map uh, in terms of make sure there's no physical reflect. Perfect. I'm going to go on there. Um, and I'm just going to throw some beasts on there. Just elk, get some beasts. I have a lot of uh, missions I haven't done yet. So I'm going to do one of those, get in here, kind of showcase the build. So, yeah, I just activate Blood Rage, uh, fail to find any monsters, and yeah, it's a pretty fast build. Uh, there's a lot of things that could be done to make the clear better, like uh, an explody chest, for instance, would be really nice, especially considering right now one of my biggest weaknesses is if the map has porcupines, I almost certainly die. Uh, as you can see, I'm reserving my life and using petrified blood. Uh, and I'll talk more about that. There's a lot of uh, <laughs> little bits of nuance to that. Uh, but yeah, my actual unreserved life is less than 2,000 at the moment. And obviously, uh, I've actually built most of the offense I'm going to get. I'll show my DPS on POB with, with all of my buffs up and stuff uh, here. But it's like one and a half million or something. It's pretty solid pretty decent uh, and that's going to grow as well. I'm going to simultaneously build a lot of defenses and offenses going forward and I think the end game of this build will be very strong. Uh, one of the most interesting things about this build is how cheap it is. Now it actually has gotten a little bit more expensive so the reason I decided to do this is because I saw that Pillar of the Cage God 6 links at the time were only like 15 chaos. They've actually gone up to uh, 30 or maybe a little over 30 chaos since then. I'm gonna do this uh, right now with my poor defenses. Uh, I am not very good at doing ultimatums just yet. Also, I'm going to be getting a ton more a AoE, which is gonna help keep me safe, along with uh, a lot of like stun stuff. So, uh, oh, and we cleared that quick enough anyway, assault. but yeah, I I could very well die in doing a delirium or an ultimatum. Ultimatums are not yet my forte, especially the stone circle ones, but you know, we're still alive. Keep going, uh, we'll do cooldown and stuff. Of your own I like that they made the stone circles a little bit bigger. Makes it a little bit easier, especially if you're just running through. You can just walk around in a circle to get around them. I don't like doing choking miasma in the uh, in this particular type of thing. Uh, if I keep all of my flasks up, I don't have to worry too much about corrupting blood. It's a little bit harder because for some reason the monsters seem to hang out outside of the circles a lot. Alright, and a very not great <laughs> jewel, but we'll see if we can get something spicy. Probably not, it's a tier 5 map, more than likely we're not going to get anything good, but it's always worth checking. And sometimes you can get a little tiny stack of like 2 or 3 chaos out of it, it's good enough for me at the moment. And the experience is okay, although once again the stone circle, okay we got a rusted torment uh, scarab here. The wind conspires with the flames. Yeah, my damage is good, my area is okay, my area is going to get a lot better soon. Uh, I haven't gotten my last ascendancy just yet, uh, and it's mostly because I'm worried about getting one shot by Azaro, which is a big time threat uh, at the moment. 
because uh, as you'll see, my defenses aren't exactly where I want them uh, just yet. Especially considering I have to get, um, I have a difficulty kind of generating endurance fa uh, charges fast enough in the beginning of a fight, which is pretty much the biggest hurdle I need to cross here. Alright, so, not the best in the world, but it'll do. Grab some stuff. Alright, cool. We are using uh, Impale, so the damage ramps up pretty quick. It doesn't ramp up quite as quickly as, say, Cyclone, but I feel like Sweep, uh, because of its damage effectiveness, has better synergy with this build. I did a little research into what other people are doing, and a lot of other people are also using Sweep. Sweep has a very high amount of added physical damage, uh, which means that, you know, the base low base weapon damage of Pillar of the Cage Gods... Um, Coupled with the huge amount of percent physical we get from stacking stat. So, ooh, got stunned there. Uh, mostly because of my low health total, I think. And I'm actually not going to be taking stun immunity more than likely because my hope is to get high enough physical damage reduction and high enough uh, health, base health pool to where I won't need to. There you go. Alright. Kill the boss real quick. Throw down the pillar, get my flasks up, and she's dead. Yeah, the boss killing is pretty decent so far. Uh, and it's only going to get better. Alright, so now that I've displayed a map, uh, I'll kind of go over the character. So currently level 78, uh, Juggernaut. Uh, all of the gear is relatively cheap except for the Astramentus, which has a very... Uh, I have a very good roll on this one, so it actually was a little bit more expensive. I think it was 0.8 exults. Uh, that is probably, and actually the lore weave, which is not necessary. In fact, it may not even be uh, the best for the build. I think arguably the best for the build would be the Iron Fortress, uh, which will grant you 1% block chance per 50 strength. Uh, a bunch of strength, and also make it so strength's damage bonus gets 3%... Uh, D increase melee physical damage per 10 strength instead of the baseline 1%. So uh, we would gain a lot of physical damage, but we're already gaining a ton of physical damage through Pillar of the Cage God, so I don't think it's necessary. It's just one of those optimization things. And one of the biggest boons would be that we would get nearly... Uh, we'd probably get like 80 or 90 more strength than we get from the Lore Weave, which would, of course, add it up. But we get flat physical from Lore Weave along with... Uh, some life and uh, higher elemental resistances so our baseline elemental resistances are 77 uh, which is going to help a decent amount with tankiness and yeah there's uh, oh and crit chance as well we get some crit chance so currently our crit chance without our diamond flask and without power charges is 45.82 uh, percent need to work on crit multi uh, probably do that with jewels i have a few uh, two socket jewels to get uh, probably try to get as much crit multi on those as possible i'm also going to probably do a cluster jewel and we'll see if we can fit some more jewels in um but i'll kind of i guess i'll go over what i'm using here so uh the way pillar of the cage god works is you get a bunch of bonuses based on attribute stacking uh currently i have a little over a thousand strength uh, almost 400 dex and 260 intelligence, which I'm focusing much less on because that just gives area of effect. Uh, and I'm going to be getting some area of effect with unyielding, which I decided is most likely going to be my last uh, one because I feel like uh, the stun duration per endurance charge, which I'm planning on picking up two more, which will put me at six uh, at some point. So yeah, basically all of my next uh, gems are going to, or all of my next skills are going to go into uh, jewels, these, all the two socket jewels that I haven't gotten, as well as uh, endurance charges. So that's like my next eight levels is that. So that'll put me at level 86, and after that I'll just fill out just plain life. But I'm going to try to get some like life uh, and crit multi, at least two different kinds of crit multi, on my jewels, and that should pump that up quite a bit. But yeah, uh, with power charges I get another like... Uh, nine point 
whatever, 9.6, I think, uh, critical strike chance. So it puts me up into the uh, a pretty high range. And I, I do plan on also getting an Assassin's Mark on hit ring, potentially, or vulnerability. I actually have both of them on other characters, but I would like to get ones that have uh, a large amount of strength if possible. I've been using La Hoop of all, uh, well, for quite a while, so... Um, and yeah, a lot of this stuff you can slot in. The most important thing while leveling, this is a great one to level. So you buy the six link uh, pillar, uh, you start using that at level 13, you get swap at le sweep at level 12, and most importantly, there is a really great item for leveling with this that'll make your entire leveling experience feel amazing, and that is Meganord's Girdle. Uh, between the large amount of strength that you get, so 60 strength and the flat physical damage to scale. Um, it is your entire leveling experience wearing this is breezy, super breezy. So you'll have very, very little problem just absolutely dominating, especially when you add Nastramentus at level 20. Um, and I believe Meganord's Vice is like level 35 and La Hoop of All is level 24. So you get to use basically most of your equipment I don't remember, and this has an enchant, so I can't even check unless I have another pair in here somewhere. Uh, I'm sure, nope, maybe not. But yeah, the Elbereth's Warpath, uh, which I might swap out of these. 18% increased strength is really, really nice, but and the Chaos Resist is good too, but uh, maybe I want something with a little bit more on the resistance side. Um, my resistances are basically all through... The two La Hoop of Alls and uh, then the uh, helmet that I have. And I search specifically just for high of each resistance to get there. Uh, getting a little bit of elemental resistance through here. And yeah, as you can see, I'm only barely over capped. And that's with me using Diamond Skin, which I plan on specking out uh, of once I get Cluster Jewels. I'll be looking for all resist and all attributes if possible on my large Cluster Jewel along with at least one beneficial large node. So hopefully I can get something like that going that will fix a lot of my problems and add a lot of power to the build. And I also might swing down through these strength and respec out of these to get two extra points once I do that. So yeah, there's a lot of messing around I have to do, but I think this is a really cool and fun build. Um, and I would recommend it. Uh, leveling it is going to be one of the most fun experiences. Like I said, you literally uh, just toss on a lot of the leveling gear as you go. Like, you're right from the get-go, you toss on your normal leveling stuff, whatever, your, like, Wanderlust and your uh, Gold Rim. And then, uh, you know, maybe a couple of uh, Black Hearts or something. Uh, you swing right through uh, using whatever you want to use. You can use uh, Cleave or you can use you know, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Molten Strike or something. And then as soon as you hit level 12, 13, you pop on the pillar. Uh, the next, in Act 2, you're already going to have your two La Hoop Dells, your Astramentus, and your, uh, of course, you get your Meg Meganord's Device, which is only level 8. So that's going to power you up super quickly. And it is a breeze to level. Uh, as far as my Ascendancies, I actually didn't talk about um, being a Juggernaut. Um, one of the cool things about Juggernaut is you get Undeniable, which gives you 1% increased attack speed per 150 accuracy, and you gain accuracy equal to twice your strength. Currently, our accuracy is sitting at almost 10,000. We are scaling our accuracy uh, through, like, Eagle Eye. We're getting Versatility, which also gives us uh, Crit Strike and Stats and Attack Speed, so this is a very efficient node for this particular build. Um, I'm actually anointing Weathered Hunter, partially because I need more all resist, but also it gives dex. A uh, great thing about dex, dex gives accuracy. Uh, one, one dexterity gives two accuracy, in fact, which scales with the percentage accuracy. We're also getting Art of the Gladiator, which is a great node for this. So uh, we're kind of double dipping when we, when we scale dexterity because we get 1% uh, increased attack speed per 10 dexterity. And then we also get increased attack speed based on accuracy, which we get from dexterity. And we also get accuracy from strength. So we're never going to miss. Uh, we're, we're way overshot as far as the accuracy goes. Um, other than that, 
I got Unbreakable. Unbreakable is a really good defensive one. Uh, unfortunately, double of 452 isn't that great. Another reason possibly to go Iron Fortress is it has a base armor of like 1100 or something, which is going to give you a ton more benefit and a ton more base physical uh, damage reduction. I have the Endurance Charges, which give the physical damage reduction, but yeah, um, certainly... You don't need to go lower weave, trust me. And a well-rolled lower weave, if you do want to go for it, is going to be pretty expensive. This one was uh, an exalt without it being six-linked. Uh, just focusing on high physical damage to attacks, attributes, and life was all I looked for. Uh, that's the only important thing. Obviously, I would prefer the uh, maximum resistances to be 78 instead of 77. Um, and of course, if you can get like a perfect lower weave, you're probably golden and it might actually outperform everything or a close to perfect one a little bit more crit chance wouldn't hurt as well but like i said our crit chance is pretty great pretty rock solid and then i got unflinching which gives us an additional max endurance charge and a very easy way to do it um, i need to re i don't have the currency i need to recolor my helmet i'm gonna have these three links be red and then I'm going to, and I'm probably going to try to do this with Harvest, and I'm going to put a cast on damage taken, um, Immortal Call, which will be very, very powerful once I get up to six endurance charges. It'll give us a ton of physical damage mitigation very frequently, and that will pretty much actually probably be the cherry on top that we need for defenses, I think. So, and yeah, sweeps only level 18. Uh, and I actually manually quality it. I should have just bought a 2123 sweep. Uh, I would recommend if you have a lot of currency to do, throw around to do that. Uh, it's going to be like level 74. And you're probably going to substantially increase your damage. Uh, our baseline DPS, I'll pull up my path of building right now. Our baseline DPS as now with uh, power charges, frenzy charges, uh, life tap. Oh yeah. I should probably go over my links as well. I'm using Life Tap because I like the way that it feels as far as uh, being able to spend, not having to spend mana. If you have other ways to not have issues with mana, because let's see, if I take out Life Tap, I don't have any leech. I mean, it's not that bad. Uh, and even like a jewel with mana leech would be enough to make it so that you don't need this. And instead you can use like a Pulverize or Fortify. Um, I need to work Fortify into my links as well, probably with Leap Slam, so that I can easily get that. So yeah, there's still quite a bit of optimization. Um, so currently, my links on Sweep are Sweep, Bloodthirst. Bloodthirst is very important. This is where you get a lot of your damage. Um, so we're getting a ton... If you look right here, uh, 127,000 without any buffs. And that doesn't include, like, Pride and Impale. It literally doubles our damage. Like, we're 67,600. So by having this reserved, which is uh, with the Petrified Blood, uh, we have 40%. Uh, yeah, there's a lot about Petrified Blood. But basically, when you take damage, 40% of life loss uh, before half is prevented. And then 84% uh, of the life loss this way is... Uh, brought back over four seconds type thing so it turns some of the damage you take into damage over time we have okay regen uh we get a lot of regen from meganord's vice uh so base regen of 297 which is like almost it's like 15 percent i think of what our current life is plus we have leech and the leech uh, i get increased uh recovery per second from life leech from martial experience i decided to go this route so between those two things we're able to regen very quickly uh to outgo the dot sometimes when we're hit by a lot of small things because our block chance isn't that high yet uh it's only 30 percent if we were to get the iron fortress uh, it would be 50%, and then, like, with a perfectly rolled uh, Rumi's or something, Rumi's Concoction, uh, we could get it up to 70%, so near cap. I'm probably not going to go get Glancing Blows and, like, Steelwood Stance, that kind of thing, because uh, I want to focus on some other stuff for now. And more life and more strength, uh, and strength gives life. Um, 
you know, two strength is one life. So you get five base life just from getting, uh, like, one of these small strength nodes, which is pretty, pretty cool. So we're going to uh, get that, and that actually scales the more life we have, the more uh, we get bloodthirst. So, yeah, we have life tap, multi-strike. Multi-strike's really good if you can get awakened multi-strike, obviously, but it's very, very expensive. Um, then we have brutality. Uh, same thing, if you can get awakened brutality, go for that, but brutality is very good. And then lastly, impale. And these are all low-level gems still. Our damage has a ton to grow, probably going to hit at least 5 million, I would say, uh, very comfortably and hopefully quite tanky by the end of this build as well. And, yeah, Leap Slam, Life Tap, Faster Attacks, uh, Arrogance with Herald of Purity and Precision, uh, with, importantly, Sovereignty. Getting Sovereignty allows us to run a ton of auras. We have Precision, Petrified Blood, Pride, which I actually have Pride on my La Hoop of All. I got this very cheap as well, so it was really nice because otherwise I'd you know, have to put Pride in here, which would take up a gem slot, which I'm not even using all of them anyway, but I intend to by the time I get everything worked out. Uh, Dread Banner and Herald of Purity. I would also like to fit in Flesh and Stone and Vitality at some point. I don't know if that's going to be possible. Vitality is going to be very easy to eventually get in, but I think uh, Flesh and Stone, probably not. But we get Maim from Dismember anyway. 20% uh, chance to Maim enemies on Critical Strike with attacks. Um, so we're probably going to be maiming most bosses that we spend any more than like one or two attacks on regardless. So I don't think it's too big of an issue. Um, yeah, and Belt of the Deceiver for Intimidate. Um, I have a Watcher's Eye that gives me Intimidate if I have Pride, so I might slot that in at some point. Uh, drop Belt of the Deceiver and just try to get the craziest strength stacking belt that I can possibly get. Uh, there are a lot of like synthesized belts you can get that give percent strength. Uh, you can roll very high strength numbers, you know, just generally on the belt. So... I think that would be possibly the way to go. Um, yeah, and we take pretty... The reduced damage from critical strikes is helpful as well. So, uh, for now, Belt of the Deceiver. But yeah, um, oh yeah, and Flasks. I'm using Kiara's Determination to get rid of uh, Curses and Stuns. Uh, it's, I don't have it qualityed yet, uh, so I need to actually react. Um, right now I still get stunned because my life is still low and my physical damage mitigation isn't as high, especially if I don't have my endurance charges up yet. I also generate endurance charges uh, when I get a critical strike um, with a 10% chance of smashing strikes. So uh, sometimes that helps depending on how lucky I get. Uh, Lion's Roar, which is incredible. We already have knockback with sweep, so you don't feel it. Like you really feel the Lion's Roar when you're playing Cyclone sometimes if you don't have enough damage. On something because you'll knock things out of your range. I really experienced this very hard with my uh, General's Cry build, but with this, nope, you don't feel it at all. <laughs> so really, really cool. Uh, just free more melee physical damage. Uh, I am running uh, Diamond Flask as well. I got a Freeze and Chill removed, a Corrupting Blood removed, pretty standard stuff. So I have a way to get rid of mostly everything, not Shock. So getting Shocked is unfortunate, but you know, I don't think there's anything really I can do about that. And yeah, that's pretty much the build, my plans, the gear. It's really fun. Would recommend. Uh, long video, but I hope you enjoyed anyway. This has been Ryan from Behind Eyes Gaming, and I will see you next time. Bye.